Okay, we're going to do a very quick um, video on the background building, which is uh, looks like two buildings, but it's actually built as one unit. Uh, a lot of what we're doing here is more experimental uh, than anything else, but just to give you a quick overview. First of all, the background building is made out of MDF board. It needs no bracing. I did a little bit on mine just to help secure the side walls, the sides of the walls, which only go about an inch deep. And the front, and here it is right here. This is before anything has been done to it, other than the walls and the roof have been added. If you notice, I added some strip wood, uh, some scraps along here just to make sure everything went together, you know, neatly and keep the 90 degree angles. Uh, the front here, which is elevated from here, is is a secondary layer of MDF that we've put a self-adhesive uh, peel and stick backing on. You gotta lay it down very carefully, but it's uh, it goes on quite easily and it will give the uh, the look of two uh, recessed wall section here. It's supposed to be two buildings. We're approaching it as two buildings. And what I'm going to do now, we have a beautiful day out. And a friend of mine, Frank uh, Bernard, mentioned he used uh, khaki Rust-Oleum flat paint. Well, I went to my local hardware store and they had Rust-Oleum. They didn't have khaki, but they had camouflage which looks like a pretty good color. So what I'm going to do is now that this is glued together, and this may not be impressive now, but I have a really good feeling about all of this. Uh, we're going to spray this whole assembly with this uh, camouflage paint. Now, keep in mind that the bottom right here, there's going to be a building jutting out in the front of this. Uh, so this is meant to be a concrete surface. Bricks, obviously, are where they are. And of course, you have the area here. Regardless of what it ends up to be, whether it's brick or concrete, we're going to start with the common base of camouflage paint. So that's uh, that's next in line, and we'll get back to this. Now, that $8 can of paint I just went and purchased was good for about 15 seconds because that's all the paint it took to uh, to cover the uh, to cover these walls. Now, I don't know if you can tell the back from the front, but uh, the fronts and the sides and even the top side just gave a coat of the camouflage paint. Now, you want to come to a realization. This wall and this wall are supposed to represent two separate buildings. You don't want to paint them the identical colors. This wall is the wall, the back wall of a building as it faces into the diorama. That would be a well-kept contemporary building as of the time of your diorama. Um, here again, complete with a laser cut building coming out the bottom that would introduce the look of interior access through the lower portion of this building. This wall, on the other hand, if you notice, there's very little in the way of uh, actual windows or anything. All the windows have been bricked up, and the area that has nothing basically represents uh, what would be a uh, stuccoed kind of a thing where the buildings have been repaired over the years, and it's going to be treated a little bit differently. Both sides of this uh, assembly, let me move this, both sides are going to be definitely uh, signed up and possibly uh, we'll see how it works out probably a couple of details hanging off of this thing uh, Just to bring it some color and some different and some uh, relief now remember this is going to be sitting towards the back and back of other buildings so say uh, this was a building and It's a bottle of hunter line as well. It is and This building was here Actually say this was a building because that's probably more the correct height. It would be down lower Say these were buildings. <laughs> I'm going to foreground until I get something close. Um, the building, the foreground buildings would be there, and this building is basically. And let me just center this up way so you can see it better. This building is basically, or these two buildings are basically just relief in back of these to help build up the scene. So it is not terribly important that this is overly done. Uh, this is simply to add some interest to the scene, some visual graphic, and some different textures, okay? So next ahead is we're going to start painting, not the concrete, because the concrete already has, already has a start, but we're gonna start coloring some of the brick. Now, I've seen companies use a lot of different shades of everything to make brick. Uh, a good friend of mine, Earl Smallshaw, who's passed away at this point, uh, used orange paint, and that's what I'm going to use here because over here is the newer area. And over here, I don't know what I'm going to come up with, but we're going to mask this out and we'll get into that in a minute. So let me add some color here. But remember, we're building color on top of color, so don't expect everything to happen in one application of color. Now, what I've done here is I've used, used some, uh, some blue tape. It's uh, low tack. Uh, we all have this stuff around and I've masked out what would be the concrete part above and below the brick sections on this 
what you would look at as the left side of the two buildings. And as well as, as a piece of masking here, because I'm trying to isolate this. And I've taken some orange paint. I happen to have some poly scales still laying around. And I've smudged it. I haven't really so much painted it because I don't really want to fill in the the, uh, the mortise areas that well. Uh, but I've smudged it, put it on very thinly. The idea is not to uh, the idea is not to block and uh, and clog up the etching between the bricks. So this is very 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 simple. It looks really good, and I can leave it alone just like this. But I'm going to add a little bit of uh, hunter line. Um, wash to it. In this case, I'm going to reach for the creosote black, but I'm not going to put it on heavy. I'm going to put it on very light, and I'm going to experiment a little bit, uh, putting it in certain areas uh, without flooding the area to make sure that I'm not overdoing it. Otherwise, I have to go back and touch it up. And the idea is not to fill, like, fill in the detail between the etch brick. Okay. Now, one thing, I, one thing I should mention is, here again, I'm using the creosote black by Hunterline. I did not shake this bottle. I did not stir the bottle. Uh, when you start, you mix the emulsion and you want a nice even flow coat. I don't want that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even have the right top on this. Uh, what I want is the thinnest part, which will be on the top to use as a wash because I want it to go on really thin. And what I can always do is add extra coats. And I took an old dirty brush that I had and because you don't need anything special for this. As a matter of fact, this stuff will help clean the brush. And all I did was put a light coat on the areas that were not recessed and by the nature of the stuff being so thin it's going to want to wick into the recesses in this case the recesses of the mortar lines now you could turn around and use a spackle or something if you want to go white mortar and then color it and bring it down in this case and this i don't think it took 20 seconds if you'll notice the raised brick areas are a little bit darker than the center brick ones. I thought I'd just try that look, and I think it looks pretty good. It uh, gives a little variation between those two colors of the bricks. And I'm not so sure as I want to do too, too much else on this. Now, there will be a time when the signs are put on and everything else that I might want to do some blending with some uh, pan pastels. I, I may have shown you this kit I got the other day. It was 10 colors in here, and this is a good kit. A little expensive, but I, I think well worth it. Uh, but for right now, I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to leave that alone. Now, I don't have any concern about, about the top at this point or getting anything on the side at this point because this is, I can unmask this. So remember, this is low-tack tape. And you could already start to see, and this only took a few seconds, how that part of the brick building is really starting to come along. It's really very, very rewarding. Um, and now I'm going to work on masking out the windows over here and we'll do that in a second and we're going to give these windows the same orangey brick effect and then we're going to work on the surrounding concrete sections the next thing i've done is ran some i ran some of the tape up and down there are three windows vertically on top of each other here so i ran tape the length lengthwise between the three windows masked out the top window which i applied a little bit of orange paint and then a quick uh brushing of of the uh, hunter line product on and what i've done is tried to isolate the window from the area surrounding the window which is going to be concrete in this case so when i pull this off i see i've got a little bleeding on the very top uh, more than i would have liked to but not much and the two longer pieces are going to stay because these go all the way down because i have two other windows to do but the two horizontal pieces are going to come off and if I were to peel this back, I'll do this really quickly just for this. And I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but if you take a look at that window, it's pretty much isolated from everything else around it as far as color goes. And you can go back in there and add a little more orange or whatever you want to do. That's pretty controllable. And that's how we're going to do the windows. We're going to mask them out one at a time. Uh, it's only a few minutes worth of work, uh, but it will set those aside. So then we'll be able to deal with the concrete end of things. Now, a quick little catch up. I'm using this, this sponge here, but I found that by dipping the sponge, I, I actually selected two colors of paint. Right now, I'm just using something called, uh, actually something called oatmeal, which is a little bit darker. And I'll follow it up with something called bleached sand, which I mentioned before, a little bit lighter. And this doesn't look great yet, but it's on its way. You can see 
how the left side of the building or your right side as you look at this is starting to have a very mottled effect. Now, what I found was when I put some paint on this sponge, I used the finer sponge surface the, the, where the pores were finer and actually blotted it out on the back of the building on the inside to make sure it was basically a dry brush technique. And when I rolled up the sponge and was more specific as far as dabbing placement, it didn't work as well as when I left the sponge sponge uh, relax a little bit and used it on a broader face because this way it actually jumped over the window sections pretty well. There's hardly any, if any, thing in the window sections there. You can see this is starting to come along. Now this is the first coat. And just like with scenery, you build it up in layers. And I'm going to continue this over to this side here and up above, and of course the side walls. And once I can give it a look and see, once it dries, we'll have a better idea where it's, where it's going. Uh, we're going to add another coat of with the sponge technique, but of a slightly lighter color to give it some variation, okay? All right, I don't know where I left off last, last session, but this is what we have here so far as far as the walls go. They're looking really good. Simple orange paint, a little bit of a wash of the uh, the black from Hunterline, this stuff here. And the khaki, well, not khaki, the camouflage paint that we had sprayed on for the concrete. Hand brushing for a lot of these bricks, and it worked out really well. And then I used some titanium white, it's called. It's one of the uh, pan pastel colors, and I was able to take some of the contrast off. So those bricks on this side of the building look less colorful than these, and that's okay because they're supposed to be two separate buildings. Now, there's going to be a building in front of this, and before I continue detailing everything else, I want to get that kind of perspective. So right now, I'm going to be working on the shed that belongs here, and it's simple. It's going to be lifting of boards. Uh, probably going to make it a very monotone look because it's a background building. We don't need white window frames or the contrasting color shell or body on this kind of thing. So once this is mounted here and I see what I have to deal with as far as graphics, details, additional, uh, maybe vines growing up, something that would give it some more um, depth perception. And this sits in back of everything else. So you're only gonna see it from about here. It's gonna sit in back of the other stuff. So this is gonna be great. Okay, let me get, uh, I'll build the other thing. I'm not going to go through the steps with you. I'm going to build the other thing that goes here. And once it's attached, we'll start blending everything together into a believable and interesting background building. <laughs> 